Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using Edge AI or embedded machine learning with a time of light sensor to recognize some sports movements. I am Adnan and I will be glad to guide you through setting up our Arduino system to detect exercises like squats, shoulder lifts and arm searches. The same techniques that I will show you in this video can empower you to create many exciting projects like people counting and gesture recognition for touchless screens control. All this by using a time of light sensor as a low resolution camera and Nano AGI Studio. Before we dive into the project, let's talk about Nano AGI Studio and what it brings to the table. Nano AGI Studio is a powerful and user friendly platform developed by ST Microelectronics for deploying machine learning models directly on microcontrollers. Machine learning will allow your system to perform complex tasks simply by learning from historical data without the need for explicit programming. The software automatically designs, trains, and suggests several machine learning models based on the data you provide, making it accessible even if you're new to AI. My entire setup runs on Arduino Uno R4 and uses Nano AGI Studio to log data, train the model, and test it. You can use any microcontroller with an ARM Cortex-M architecture. Now, Let's dive into the details. For hardware, I used an Arduino Uno R4 Minima, a Time of Light expansion board from ST Microelectronics, which is an 8x8 LiDAR sensor, a USB cable, an RGB LED, some jumper wires, and some resistors. This is for visual feedback. First, connect the Time of Light shield board. Connect the RGB LED, use 220 ohm resistors to protect the LED. Connect the red, green and the blue legs to pins 9, 10 and 11. Let's set up the software. First, download Nano AGI Studio from the ST Microelectronics website. Fill in the form and make sure your email is correct because you will receive your license code there. Open Nano AGI Studio. Create a new N class classification project, name it, select your board, and choose 8x8 time of light sensor as the sensor of this project. Now we will collect data. To begin, I will click on Add Signal. One convenient method for logging data is to do so directly from the serial port. Here, choose a class name. My goal is to make my system recognize three movements, squats, shoulder lifting, and arm stretching. Additionally, we have to add two systematic classes, which are standing and when nobody is there. Now, before clicking on start, we have to do some important setup. Open the data logger Arduino script that I left in our instructable blog post, I will leave the link in the description below. Make sure you downloaded the required Arduino libraries. Go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries, and then install the following libraries. Our goal is to fill what we call a buffer in order to print it as a line. Fill it again, print it, and feed all the lines to our machine learning model later. At this stage, we have to choose a combination of frame number and a sampling frequency that will allow us to capture the entire movement. Our sports movements are periodic and take about 2 seconds to be performed. 16 frames seems to be sufficient to capture all movement features. That's why I choose sensor frames equals 16. Please note that in Nano AGI Studio, N that represents samples number, or here frames number per each line, should be a power of 2. Now, having 16 frames per 2 seconds means that the sampling frequency is 16 frames per 2, which equals 8 Hz. However, since I want to allow a little more time to cover the entire movement or a bit more, I will choose a frequency of 7 Hz instead of 8 Hz. This means the buffer will represent about 16 frames per 7 Hz. 
which gives approximately 2.3 seconds, which is good. Now you can flash your code to your board. Now let's go back to Nano Edge AI Studio. Choose the Arduino port. Set a limit for the number of lines. I choose 140 lines and choose a class name for the first class. For example, shoulder lifting. Since the time of flight sensor is sensitive to light, try to be in a non sunny area. It works properly within a range of 3 meters. So it's better to have a background behind you. Here is my setup. I positioned the sensor to capture my movement aiming at my upper body. Please ensure you're not too far from the sensor. About 1 meter away is ideal. With a background about 2 meters away. Click start to begin data collection. Then perform the exercises naturally, varying speed and position slightly. This helps the model generalize better and avoid overfitting. After collecting data for each class, we visualize the frames to ensure proper collection. As you can see, this is the shoulder lifting exercise. Now we're going to launch the benchmark. Nano AI Studio will design and test a variety of machine learning models with different hyperparameters. The score shown here is based on accuracy, RAM usage, and flash memory usage. In just about 7 minutes, I reached a balanced accuracy of 98% with good memory usage on my Arduino. So I stopped benchmarking. Here are the best machine learning models suggested by the software. A multi-layer perceptron, which is a neural network. A random forest. A support vector machine. And an XG boost. Now let's perform what we call a test for the models. This is crucial to pick the best model for you. The best model is the one that can generalize on data from real usage. The model suggested by Nano AI Studio might be overfitted to the training and validation data, so you need a new data set solely for testing. Here is what I did before. I went to signals and collected new data for testing. Only 15 or 20 lines per class are sufficient. Save the test dataset to your local storage. Go to the validation section, select 10 libraries like I did, choose diverse models, MLP, RF, SVM, etc and run emulation using the test datasets. Please note that the more training data you provide, the better the results you will get. Additionally, the more classes you have, the more training data you will need. I did something that is not very necessary, but it can be beneficial for you to pick the best model. I collected a test dataset within the same hour as the training data, and another one at a different time with slightly different light conditions and sensor position. After testing, I choose the best model based on its generalization capability. As you can see, I found that the fourth model on the suggested list was the best. I then choose it as the compilation library by selecting the crown on the right. By clicking on report right here, you get the confusion matrix and the flow chart, which includes feature extraction and selection, 
followed by our model with some details. You can also test directly from the serial emulator. You will get results in real time and decide which model suits you. The last step is deploying the library on our board. After going to the deployment section, compile the library you selected and save it to your computer. Then extract the zipped file. Here you can see a simple example using a nano AGI library. Here include the libraries that contain your model. This is the buffer that is going to be filled and fed to our AI model to perform classification. And here is where the output is gonna be stored. It contains probabilities of all classes. We have here the fill buffer function that you should fill. A short setup. And finally, this is the first loop. It acts directly on the global variable id class and changes it to the current value so you can use it to perform an action. Now let's open the Arduino IDE and open the sketch that I've put on our Instructables blog. The link is in the description below. This code is simple. First, we import time of light libraries, then nano AGI libraries. But before this, if it's not your first time including a nano AGI library, you need to go to the directory in the path, documents, Arduino, libraries. You'll find a folder named nano AGI. This folder contains the old machine learning model, so you should delete it. If you don't, the model that will be deployed on your development board is the old one. Now, go to Sketch, include Library, add zip library, and select this file in the Arduino folder from the extracted archive. Here are the RGB LED pins. The fill buffer function is inspired by the data logger script. This function is to set the LED color. Based on this parameter, the color of the RGB LED will be set. You can choose any color you want by varying these values. We have the same setup as for the data login section because it's again for collecting data in the same format. In the main loop, this is the process. Fill in the buffer first, performing classification and modifying ID class based on the class found by the model, and then setting the LED color. To monitor the results, we print the class name and ID to serial monitor. Now you can flush your code to your board. It's better to unplug and replug the board to avoid some bugs related to serial communication. In this section, I want to discuss an upgrade to this code. It's handling multitasks on your Arduino Uno R4. This method would be very useful because almost all the time your microcontroller is busy collecting data from the sensor. This means it can't blink an LED while a buffer is being filled. And you can't send data to the cloud or to your local network. Your system is blocked until the task is complete. If you're using another ARM Cortex M based development board, you will need another library. So open this upgraded Arduino script. It's called Gym Partner Blinking. You will find it on the blog post. And download the FSP Timer library from Library Manager. I will focus only on the modifications. This variable is used to memorize the previous state in order to toggle the LED. By marking the variable as volatile, it tells the compiler that LED state can be changed unexpectedly within an interrupt service routine triggered by a timer. This ensures the correct value is always read and written, even if the variable is modified outside the main loop. This code is for blinking the LED. Each time it toggles the LED state and sets it to a color based on the current class global variable value. 
I created an FSP timer instance named LED timer. I wrote the callback function body, which is what I want to be executed in parallel with my main code. Here I want to call the blink LED function. The begin LED timer function initializes the process calling the callback function at the specified rate. I choose to call the callback function twice a second, so my LED will toggle every 500 milliseconds, giving a blinking interval of 1 second. So, we will be creating a second superloop that will be executed in parallel with the main superloop. In the main superloop, we change the value of the global variable current class based on the class detected to automatically change the LED color once the blink LED function is called in the other superloop. We are finished. Now you can perform multiple tasks, especially when your buffer is being filled for a long time. Now that everything is ready, you can make your system look good and ensure the hardware is protected. I used this figure to map the colors. You can use it too. This is the final test. As you can see, our system works properly. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tutorials on AGI and Embedded Machine Learning. See you next time!